Your Love for Asher Dean Lebowski, Baby Faith Tideguy, Charles Blas, and Untold Others is Making a Difference. David Lebowski, whose son Asher Dean died around 7 a.m. October 31, 2018 told Candid that the Guam Board of Allied Health Examiners will be investigating one of the two people he accuses of the malpractice that led to his son's death. Asher Dean was five. The decision by the board to investigate Seven Day Adventist Clinic physician assistant Ethan Snyder comes, 10 months of, comes after 10 months of silence from the board since Mr. Lebowski filed a complaint against Mr. Snyder for his role in Asher Dean's untimely death. Mr. Schneider was the SDA official who refused to allow Asher Dean to see a doctor at the clinic the day before he died. He also failed to deliver Asher Dean's medical records to Guam Memorial Hospital's emergency room. When Mr. Lebowski left SDA with his two sons to have Asher Dean admitted to the hospital, GMHER had not received the medical records when Asher Dean arrived wasting critical minutes that could have been spent stabilizing the boy. Mr. Lebowski took Asher Dean to his regular scheduled annual physical the day before his second visit. When they encountered Mr. Snyder on October 29, Asher Dean saw his physician, SDA uh, Dr. Shin Shin Miyagi, who spent a total of 15 minutes examining Asher for an exam that should have taken an hour. Mr. Lebowski informed Dr. Miyagi of Asher Dean's symptoms as the boy had a fever and had been vomiting and growing more lethargic. Dr. Miyagi never used his stethoscope to check the boy's lungs. Asher Dean, Asher Dean doctors found later, was pneum, uh, pneumonic. pneumonic yeah. How do you say this word? He had pneumonia, and his system had entered septic shock uh, by the time he was admitted to GMH on October 30. Mr. Lebowski demanded Dr. Miyagi to conduct a more thorough examination of his son. He witnessed the attending nurse and, and the doctor writing notes and entering information into SDA's medical record system. When Asher Dean's condition worsened the next day and Mr. Lebowski brought him and Asher's older brother back to SEA, it was Mr. Snyder who came to the lobby area of the clinic to meet the Lebowski's. Mr. Lebowski argued with Mr. Snyder when Mr. Snyder told him that no doctor would see Asher. He pleaded with Mr. Snyder to check on his son's medical charts. As Asher, as Asher was seen the previous day at SDA, Mr. Lebowski then decided to rush his son to GMH's ER. When Mr. Snyder became combative, went, oh, he asked Mr. Snyder for the boys' charts to take with them to GMH. Mr. Snyder said he would send the records to GMH. GMH did not have the records, at least for the first couple of hours the Lebowskis were there. Asher Dean was admitted to the pediatrics ward where he initially was seen by a couple of doctors. One of the doctors Mr. Lebowski discovered following his death noted in the chart that the boy was sepsis. By the afternoon, a nurse had told Mr. Lebowski that his son would be transferred to the intensive care unit, but no one updated him on his son's condition. Mr. Lebowski held Asher Dean in his arms, talking about the pain he was in and the vacation they would take once they left the hospital. The boy fell asleep in the early morning hours of October 31, and close to 7 a.m., he coded. Doctors and nurses rushed into the room, and within minutes, he had died between 7 p.m. October 30 and 7 a.m. October 31, not one doctor came to see Asher. The heartbroken father began searching for answers following his death. He canvassed the island's doctors and spoke to attorneys about what had happened. He filed a complaint against Dr. Miyagi with the Guam Board of Medical Examiners. They rejected his complaint despite the direct conflict of interest that its chairman, Dr. Nathaniel Berg, and others on the board have, have because of their financial relationship with SDA. He filed a complaint against Mr. Snyder with the GBAHE around the same time. That board never replied to Mr. Lebowski until this week, nearly a year after the complaint at the height of public scrutiny of the medical and allied health professions for some of their members Scandalous impunity towards adverse patient health. 
Mr. Lebowski and the parents of baby Faith Tidegui, the infant who died at Guam Regional Medical City, without ever seeing her island home outside the walls of the germ-infested hospital, each filed lawsuits in the Superior Court of Guam challenging the Medical Malpractice Mandatory Arbitration Act, the law written by doctors that makes it impossible for the poor and working class of the island to hold doctors accountable for malpractice. Those cases are ongoing in the local trial court. Meanwhile, Mr. Lebowski has taken his advocacy to the Guam legislature, hoping for the repeal of the law, which he dubs the Medical Apathy Act, reasoning that the law lulls local doctors into a sense of apathy towards their care of patients. He was joined by Monica Devera, whose son Charles Blas died at GRMC as a result of malpractice. At Mr. Lebowski's side, providing tear-jerking testimony with Anna Lynn Lagrimis, whose father has been mistreated at GRMC and is fighting for his life due to malpractice today. Senators were slow to act on Mr. Lebowski's letter writing, writing, letter writing campaign to them. Through certain senator, though certain senators did meet with him, at least three took action. Senator Therese Terlahi, the oversight chairman of the health policy, called a series of roundtable discussions on the possible re reform of the law. During the second roundtable discussion on October 3rd, doctors testify against the reform, including Dr. Burke, who callously dismissed Mr. Lebowski, then as he does now. Speaker to Speaker. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Speaker Tina Munia Barnes has advocated for these hearings as well and has told Candid that she is willing to support legislation that is the best interest of patients. That that is in the best interest interest of the patients. Senator Tello Taitakui, however, has been the only legislator who has announced plans for legislation that reforms the Medical Malpractice Mandatory Arbitration Act in a live phone interview with us. Ms. Taitakui told Candid she is working on three legis legislative options, but that she will finalize these once the roundtable discussions are concluded so that she may have a full perspective, perspective from con constituents on every side of this matter. And let me remind you, at the last hearing, roundtable hearing meeting, I believe it was only Dr. Cabrera that stayed. All the doctors, all the allied professionals were the first ones to testify. And as soon as it was over, they left. They did not stay to listen. Oh, Dr. it was Dr. Shea and Dr. Cabrera, I believe, that stayed behind. They did not hear, those doctors did not sit there and listen to what Mr. Lebowski, what Ms. Lagrimas, and what uh, uh, Monica Devera had to say. And that there really turned my stomach and I wanted to vomit. Meanwhile, with the start of the investigations into Mr. Snyder comes a process of fact-finding hearings on the merits of the case, and public scrutiny into the practices of, medical, of patient care, not just as SDA clinic, but every clinic of care throughout the island. This is a victory for the people of Guam. The Lebo Mr. Lebowski isn't doing this for himself. No amount of his advocacy can ever bring back Asher Dean into his life. In his own words, he's doing this to spare another pe parent's grief over the heart-wrenching loss of a child, a nightmare he lives with each day that goes by. The tremendous support of thousands he has received along this journey not only has been heartwarming to the grieving father, it is working to make a difference. Asher Dean's body may have gone, but he can never die while all of us think of him. The inspiration behind a movement to end the greed and power that bad doctors have over our lives. Nice article, Cello. Mm, it's your article. It's, um... Um, I just want to read the letter. Uh, we're allowed to read this letter that was sent to Mr. Lebowski from... That's from, from the Board of Allied Health? For the, from the Board of Allied Health, right? Yeah, okay. Um, this is dated October 4, 2019 to Mr. Uh, David Lebowski. 
Mr. Lebos dear Mr. Lebowski, to, to begin, please accept the board's most sincere condolences on the loss of your son, Asher. This board apologizes for not moving your complaint more expeditiously. Board member Ray Tahaji, PA-C, representing physician assistants, was on military assignments for the past months. He will be reviewing your case and render a recommendation to the board as soon as possible. In the meantime, while studying the SDA medical records of Asherdeen submitted by you, we noticed that there were handwritten notes on those three pages of urgent care note by Ethan Seth Snyder, dated 1-1-2018. If these handwritten notations were written by you, please provide the board detailed explanation of your notes in correspondence to the sections thereof. A copy of the urgent care note documented submitted by you is attached. Your response in writing is greatly appreciated. Very sincerely, Mammy C. Balahaja. Chair. Oh, she's still the chair, huh? Yeah. And then they provided it? Yes. So it's, it's still, of course, it's still a sad story because the boy died and because Asher other died. people have died. Mm -hmm. A lot. A lot of people have died. We've, uh, since this... Uh, Roundtable Canada has also received messages from women that were uh, um, not, they had a botched. Uh, they were mutilated. Yeah, at surgery at the hospital. Um, it was a C section, right? Yeah. You read that? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, guys, if, if, if you went through it, even if the statute of limitations has passed, I really think that we all need to come together and um, let's speak up. Let's go to the next hearing. Let's uh, f uh, follow David Lebowski's lead. I know I know some of you don't want to relive it. Some of you at the time that it happened, you just want to get back to normal. You wanted to walk again. You wanted to. Um, but the more voices that get out there and, and stand behind uh, Mr. Lebowski and Monica and baby Faith, I really think that there's going to be change. Guam is changing. We, we're so used to being stepped on and to shut up, to shut us up. Let's speak up. Let's get this changed. And peep, this is our island. We could take it back and fix it ourselves. And it's working. Mm -hmm. Mr. Lebowski never gave up all these months. And now he's getting a hearing. This is the first time they've communicated with him. Mm -hmm. It's working, you guys. What you're doing is working, you're speaking up, you're sending thoughts and prayers, you're having conversations about these things with your families and your friends and at work. So obviously the people in power don't feel like they have a choice but to entertain this now. So guys, we, we're, we can change, Guam is changing, we could change this and everyone's voice together makes a difference. So Faces of Justice, tonight's Face of Justice uh, part one is David Lebowski. And I know he would rather put his son's face up there. And every day, we, I pray I pray for Ashley Jean Lebowski. I know she prays for Ashley Jean I always Jean watch him, his beautiful smile. And I just, I, I want to I bite him. I want to smell him. I, he's such a cute boy. Uh, but, you know, just, just for tonight, the face of justice is his father, David Lebowski, who has brought this whole issue to a head on this island just because of his love for his son and his love for all the parents out there. I think that's, that's what it is. He loves all the parents of Guam because he doesn't want to see any parent go through what he's going through. Mm -hmm. I, I just, can I just say something? Of course. I just have, I just got deja vu, everything. I dreamt about this, reading David's story, uh, Asher's story, that now and we're going into this, everything. That door opening a little bit while earlier, it's all, I dreamt, uh, I dreamt this. You are clairvoyant. Yeah. That's I what that is, this. right? That's the same thing? I don't know what I, that is. It's, just, it's a pretty word, though. Yeah. It's a very fancy word. I feel like I can go to the red ball now. Faces of Justice, part two. And this is breaking news from tonight. Around 6 p.m. tonight, October 10, the Civil Service Commission decided to begin the ending chapter of a seven-year nightmare that seven 
wrongfully fired Port Authority workers have suffered through together. Tonight, commissioners unanimously adopted Administrative Law Judge Eric Miller's recommendation to overturn the port's firing of Francine Rocio. Ms. Rocio was the port's human resources administrator at the time of her firing. She and six other workers were wrongfully terminated on the same date and with the same template charges. Mr. Miller's recommendation was for the commission to rule that the port had, one, served Ms. Rocio her adverse action three days past the deadline, and two, never actually explained in the charges uh, what Ms. Rocio was accused of doing wrong.